So after we have the basic setup, um, we have our two main folders now, our Framework 1 folder and our Railo folder. We're going to go into our Railo folder, into Web Apps, and from Framework 1, you're going to take Skeleton and just copy it in there. Rename that to whatever project name. I'm just going to put a uh, new project. Um, now we're going to go into the context folder inside Raylo and duplicate the Raylo.xml. Rename that new XML file the same name that you named the folder. Edit that XML and look for the line that's line 32 where it says resource base. You're going to change web app slash Raylo to web app slash your folder name. And then the last thing that we need to do in this XML file is down here on line 46 where it says virtual hosts. Um, remove the, the comments and only leave one item. Inside that item, um, the naming, naming convention that I use is uh, local dot the project name dot dev. Now the last thing that we have to do is edit our hosts file. So you can open your um, terminal and we're just going to sudo chmod777 to etc slash hosts. Once that's done, do sudo vi etc hosts. When you're inside here, hit i to insert. Make a new line and put your local IP and then type in the same um, URL as you did in your virtual host for Raylo, um, the XML. Once you're done with that, hit escape and then colon X to save and then just restart Apache. So now we have a Raylo context set up and we have our um, new project folder. Um, we need to generate the web inf folder and Raylo does that automatically. You can just um, start Raylo. Once you start Raylo, you should see that folder get generated in there. And then if you go to local.newproject.dev with port 8888, you should get an error because um, we need to set up a mapping that's left. Uh, I, think I, I think I already set it up in... Uh, if when you, when you get to here, if you get an error that you can't, uh, can't find org dot org dot core field dot fr uh, framework go to um, local dot new project slash uh, dot dev colon eight 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 and then go to Raylo context slash admin slash index dot cfm once you go in there it's going to ask you um, to set a password just go to server administrator set your password and then once you log in you should be taken to this screen. Over here on the left side, you're going to go to Mappings, and then you're going to add this mapping. So the shortcut to how to get that path in OSX is you hit virtual, front slash org, and then for resource, you can just go to your finder and uh, go back to that Framework 1 folder that we made. And that org folder, just right click the core field and get, get info, and it'll show you the path to it. Copy that path and put it inside your resource. Once you have that, hit save. And then now, when you refresh your site, it should give you this framework one default layout. Um, if it doesn't, just restart Raylo. Just hit control C at the Raylo terminal and then start it again. And then just make sure that you are in the Framework 1 default layout. Once we're here, um, just to go over really quick 
the folder structure and very briefly how CFCs and CFMs work with uh, Framework 1. I'm going to make a new site in Coda I'm using. Make it in Sublime or whatever you're using. Um, just point it to that directory. So at the beginning, um, the index CFM, the main thing that's different is not going to have anything in there. It's just going to have complete empty, just commented. Um, your application CFC, it has some default options that we'll go over later. For right now, you can just leave this how it is as default. And the way that, that Framework 1 works is by with controllers and views. If you go in your, well, before we get into that, um, if you check out the layouts folder and you go to default, this is the main layout that you're going to see at the top of the uh, of the of the page, right? Framework one skeleton, and then it's going to output this RC dot title variable. This framework one default layout that's going to be our header, and then the body is going to be um, this gets called from the views. This is basically always going to run whenever you load a page. Um, for now, if you go to views main default then you'll see this is the default view for framework one and you know the the body basically they got printed out from the default layout and then the last thing that connects the views is the controllers if you go to controllers and go to main you'll see that it has a function default um, and just so that we're on the same page with uh, with these tags, so I mean, we're starting Java, but to kind of get it easier on, on what everybody is using right now is uh, we'll just use the, the tag CF component. This is basically what your application needs to, uh, to initialize framework one. Um, basically, the same thing that we had, just not in CF script. Um, so this init function gets called whenever we load the page, right? And it takes us to here. One thing to note is that if you want to refresh any variables, that whenever you're working in your application CFC um, and we, we're changing stuff around, you're not going to see the change here automatically. You can go to front slash question mark reload equals true, and that's just going to refresh your application for you. So then here it gives us automatically an error. That today, when we're looking for in, uh, I think it's in the default. Where's the default? Here, this RC dot today is not existing because it's RC. We didn't set it um, from what I had in the in the other main CFC. So if we go back and check what is uh, what was it defined in the CF script, we have a a, a function called default, which is gonna take us to the default page, right? And then it's setting the RC when is now variables FW service. Um, we're not going to get into services right now. All we're going to do is, is initialize the, the program, and then we can write a, a default function. just going to take out this if we, if we wanted to or actually that's a good example if if we, if we save this right now and we have a default function right this default is going to get called as soon as we load the page because the view for the default how it works is that if you're in controllers main and you're in function default then it's going to look for views main and then default CFM that's how it works so then as soon as you go in default CFM it's going to try to output this variable RC dot today to the to the um, HTML, right? So when we re refresh this, it's going to say today doesn't exist because we haven't defined this RC dot today. If we go back to the main CFC and then inside that function default, we define CF set RC dot uh, today equals testing. Now if we reset this. If you check on your, you know, since we're CF outputting, that's basically just how you bring a variable from uh, from the, your CFC 
to your page. You, st you can store it in a variable called RC. RC is kind of like a global, global variable. If we would have said that CF set today equals testing, and then go to our CFM and then try to output that today variable, it's not going to work because it doesn't get carried over through the RC. So that's why we use RC to carry stuff basically from your CFC to your CFM. And the last thing that I'm going to say is for our default right here in our views main default instead of just outputting this uh, today variable I'm gonna delete that and just write basic HTML inside here I'm going to use what's called a build URL um, it's just basically creating a link in between your views and everything runs good with the, it first hits the controller and then it goes to your view. So if you would normally write an href, right? A href equals um, whatever your link would be. In this, we're gonna, we're gonna write CF output and then inside those tags, we're gonna do number sign build URL and then we're going to put main dot sum page. Close that out. And then just write some text in there. So what this is doing is just basically t redirecting the browser that's going to go find the view, uh, find the controller main, and then check if it has a function called sum page then take you to the view that's going to be in inside main we're going to define a, a CFM called some page right so right now if we run this it's going to say click to visit some page but when we click it it's not going to exist right we haven't created that yet so we're going to go back and then just duplicate this we're inside our, our views main we're going to duplicate that default CFM and then rename it to some page inside some page we're going to set the title to some page title. And then inside this, I'm just going to write default text of So now if we refresh this and click this, it's going to take us directly to the page. Um, and notice that we don't have defined in our controllers our main CFC we don't have a function called some page so it's just it, it just automatically bypasses it and finds the view and takes you to the view um, if we wanted to write to, to, to do something like in the in the next few tutorials we're going to be querying databases and using ORM for entity loads um, we would write that in here um, we could write a, a CF function we would name it um, some page and then in here we would do whatever we need like if we would hit hit the database and then store it into a variable we could say something like cf set rc dot sum results equals these are some results okay so now that is going to hit the cfc because now it exists the function that matches up to the sum page and then inside our cfm we can now access this uh, rc dot sum results variable this is some page. And then you can just write it CF output. And then the hashtag RC.sum results and then hashtag. So now when we refresh, when we go back, we click to visit some page, and then in some page you see these are some results. So that's basic. Uh, variable passing again from a CFC to a CFM.